Hi everyone. It is September 17, 2019. Okay, Texas, beware. I will get to an article that just is really... Uh, that what these meteorologists are saying is it's so incomprehensible, but I want to start with this, uh, which I completely spaced and left out of the video that I posted yesterday. Uh, I said something about the radar ships, and then I didn't even include this in the video. These are the wild radar ships that make missile defense possible, and it also makes high-frequency heating of our atmosphere or sending those high frequencies into the ionosphere. All right, I'm not going to read anything about the ships. I'm just going to show you the pictures here. There, they just travel around. And here, from these white bulbs, very big, very big balls, they can emit extremely powerful high frequencies into our ionosphere, push it up, and then they come back as extremely low frequencies and do an awful lot of damage, but they can control our weather. Out in the oceans, this is where these guys are, the Gulf of Mexico. All the high frequency heating that we see with these hurricanes. Okay. I just wanted you, you can check out the videos. They tell you what they are for uh, missile defense, just missile defense. Okay. Don't worry. It's only well, for our protection, because our military loves us so much, they need to protect us. And surveillance. A whole lot of these ships. So, yeah, we've got radar all over. All over. These things are so incredibly dangerous and, well, they're bringing to an awful lot of the world just destruction. Destruction. And we, we can't seem to work together. Hmm. But, but those who are evil, boy, do they get the job done. I want to play just a few short clips of some videos. Here is President Kennedy. And lo and behold, this man is talking about weather control. Those further cooperative efforts between all the nations in weather prediction and eventually in weather control. Why would he be talking about weather control if we never did any research, never did any experiments, and, oh, God, Carol, man can't control the weather. Why would he be talking about this decades and decades ago? How about the next guy after him? Wow, what did he say? Ah, but did he say something about 
Oh, he who controls the weather can control the world? Not the opportunity that will provide. But it lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite. That will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer. And ultimately, to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. Wow. Well, I wanted to make sure that was loud enough. Loud enough for, well, those who just happen upon a video so that they can hear it loudly. America stands ready to stun the world with a vast array of powerful new weapons and other countries are lining up for this new electromagnetic arms race. Because these electromagnetic weapons are so new, they are not controlled by treaties that cover conventional weapons. This could lead to the deployment of electromagnetic weapons in space and unleash forces too powerful to control. I became interested in the Space Preservation Act and in developing the Space Preservation Act when I learned that uh, our administration in, in Washington was uh, looking at a, um, at a program called Vision 2020. And Vision 2020 actually is a program for the United States to dominate the world from outer space. The Department of Defense has been working at a facility in uh, Alaska, which is doing research into effects of electromagnetic frequencies in the ionosphere. And that facility, which is called HARP, has raised concern among many individuals about how this research would be applied. Uh, for example, uh, we know that, uh, according to some of the research, as these energy pulses are directed into the ionosphere, they, they can have uh, somewhat of an effect. Some people I know have worried about messing with the ionosphere, and I think that needs a lot of investigation. Because at the time, we were looking at something that could be used to defend us. Uh, 6,000 nuclear warheads looking at you kind of trump just about every other thing you might want to look at. But uh, if you want to, if they ever wanted to build this antenna as big as I was talking about, then you really need to look at side effects. What kind of negative effects remain to be seen? Electromagnetic pulses could punch holes through the ionosphere and destroy one of the Earth's protective layers in the same way that pollution depletes the ozone layer. Very good video. You might want to watch it and circulate it. Weather modification and tornado mitigation by electromagnetic satellite beam. And yeah, it's, uh, well, scientists who are, most of it is uh, this conference right after Bernard, Bernard uh, Eastland died, December 2007. Lyle Jenkins was the presenter of atmospheric heating as a research tool weather modification conference. How about retired Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Bearden who was an expert in scalar technology and listen to what he says during this interview. He knows exactly what's going on in the world of science. Tom, welcome aboard. What's happening with the weather? Is it being manipulated? Is it being controlled? Or is this uh, nature doing its thing all by itself? Well, in my opinion, it's being strongly influenced uh, <clears throat> by uh, outside devices and outside means, uh, particularly the weather over North America itself. 
Let's Let's get into that because it's affected a lot of people. Lives have been lost here in the United States of America. Okay, let me, uh, to get into the thing and exactly how it's being done, and, and before I get through tonight, I want to give the audience some things they can look for in the sky and uh, see. I will give them some very specific uh, signatures uh, that they can see for themselves when this is being done. Okay, now, because I have posted these videos on my channel, uh, I'm, I... If you have not seen these videos, I hope that you do click on the links below and check them out. Signatures that Tom Bearden was just referring to, that he was going to be discussing later in this interview. Scalar waves in your sky. You know, it's really unbelievably I don't, I don't have like one word to describe, you know, with these, how you feel watching people get so destroyed and Texas, you may be in for another hit, but Texas, you've got your, it's so obvious, especially with Texas, because you have your Texas Weather Modification Association, you've got the head of your Texas Weather Modification Association who shows up and gives reports to the advisory committee. And it's on YouTube. This is on YouTube. It's posted on YouTube the Texas Weather Modification Advisory Committee has a YouTube channel and they talk about their success in bringing rain to Texas. They make it for you. Man-made. And, well, this is what your head of the Texas Weather Modification Association said during an interview. This is what he said in an interview. <laughs> this summer? This summer. You, you succeeded in increasing rainfall? Uh, south of San Antonio, we had aircraft flying on a dozen days in the month of July, treating what we deemed to be seedable storms. And what was the result of that? Uh, the same result that we've seen since it started in 1997. Some clouds respond very well. Some clouds respond only to a limited degree. Maybe one or two instances when, uh, one or two instances when clouds didn't respond as we had hoped, probably because we got to them too late. And when you say they responded very well, what does that mean? It means that the storm lived longer and produced more rain over a larger area. Did you hear that? It means that the storm produced more rain over a longer period of time over a larger area. Think Harvey. Okay. All right. Um, I will also link below to climatology is a joke. A Nobel laureate, Dr. Uh, Carrie Mullis. There, are, the actual, real, legitimate scientists have come out. So many of them have come out and said the IPCC, United Nations Intergovernmental Panel, Intergovernmental Panel not interscientific panel, intergovernmental panel on climate change. It's a panel to draw up policy for governments to implement. And how many videos have I and so many of us posted on this IPCC? It, it's a panel, it's a joke, it's a fraud. 
and it is producing lie after lie. Compilation of scientists speak truth regarding global warming, its fraud, data manipulation, not science. Not science. Okay. Um, once again, I will link below to 1000 Frawley, PhD. You want to know what that means? That means this channel is filled with videos of scientists, climatologists, environmentalists, who are disputing this climate change, global warming fraud. Climatology is a joke. Uh, Man-made global warming is pseudoscience. Nobel laureate. Uh, there is no such thing as man-made climate change. 25 NASA scientists question the sanity of global warmists how wind farms destroy the environment, toxic waste, and how they destroy the health of life around those wind, form, uh, wind farms. Um, I mean, it's, it just goes on and on. Video uh, scientists have to, and still we can't get through to people. I, I, it's really Judith Curry quits over climate craziness. Professor, the head of, was it the Georgia Institute? Um, climatologist, uh, climatologist John Christie, Alabama State climatologist, all of them but you're not going to hear them on mainstream media. You will not hear any of these people on mainstream media. And I just posted a video. What was it yesterday? The head of the World Meteorological Association who came out and said uh, something's wrong with these climate extremists, essentially. That's what he said. And, and the IPCC. But what rules the day? What rules the day? You have, well, <laughs> adults have made the world a worse place. So now I'm here for revenge. This is how children view climate change. They have been fed a lie and they think it's the truth It's, and it's, uh, what was the uh, Newsweek? Okay. This is all you're going to hear from mainstream media. The promotion of a lie. Man is bringing about these extreme weather events. And you then read these articles and it's about well, uh, who this kid is, this Greta Thunberg, a climate activist, 16 years old, another exploited child in the uh, climate change business, business. It's a business. Well, yeah, I believe children are bearing the emotional burden of climate change more courageously than adults but we owe it to them to share it. Listen to your children when they talk about climate change. You'll learn more about how we should take responsibility for the mess. Where do you even begin? This mess is so huge. Where do you even begin? You know, anger was the most common emotion that surfaced with this technique, 
these complicated emotions about climate change, perhaps difficult to express or articulate in conversation, surprised me. But they probably shouldn't have, given the severity of climate change and biodiversity loss predicted in their lifetimes. Anger seems appropriate. Yes, 12 years. 12 AOC. 12 years. We only have 12 years. So this, what, by 30? Well, everything will be destroyed and you'll be dead. You want to believe AOC? You want to believe the AI PCC spewing lies, kid? Really? Jesus. And that's a rather evil look. Um, I asked the children to personify climate change. You created me, and now you must face the consequences. This is what some kid said. You spoiled the planet. You spoiled the planet for the children and animals. Now I'm going to spoil it for you. Adults have made the world a worse place, and now I'm here for revenge. Maybe that was Greta. It's normal for us now to grow up in a world where there will be no polar bears. Polar bears. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> well, there are so many that I believe it's Russia and another country, Jesus, I can't remember. Oh, but yeah, they were having to uh, implement some uh, policies to restrain the the breeding of polar bears because the polar bear population was becoming so huge. Polar bears are not dying, but this is what we hear. I, I don't. I it, look. I don't know. This world is really something I just never expected. <laughs> I, yeah, I really, whoa, man. A 10-year-old in the UK. There will be no polar bears. That's just how it is for us now. It's different than it was for you. Well, guess what? It sure is different. Uh, but it's different for all of us because we are inundated with lies mainstream media uh, in virtually every country is controlled by the CIA putting out their propaganda and these kids you know they're advocating for the control of every aspect of their life that's what they're advocating for and I can't stand these kids who have been so you know motivated by a lie you know, I think the Greta people are just part of the, you know, it doesn't matter if you're 16 years old, you can still be, hey, I'll be that spokes girl for the youth. I know it's a lie, but I don't care. But a whole lot of kids, man. You'd love to see them you know, motivated on, by the truth, but they're motivated by a lie. And it's upsetting. So Phoenix area sees heavy rain, localized flooding, and power loss. Power loss. Phoenix. Ah. Oh, look. Frequencies that seem to be swallowing up this storm right here. So what's happening in, in the Phoenix area? Are you getting a lot of rain and power outages? And uh, this is Umberto, which now is a great threat for Bermuda. This is Umberto, but look at, look at our, once again, you know, pretty much the Eastern half of the country lit up with dangerous frequencies. Anybody who looks at 
radar, you don't have to be an expert. You, you know that something is very wrong. Why are these radar stations pulsing away with dangerous frequencies lit up? Are there no planes anywhere else? Really? All right, well, yeah, so we have this Texas. Gulf low to bring heavy rains to Texas and scattered storms for um, Acadiana, Acadiana. All right, I want to actually read this. This is Forbes. A potentially nameless storm could cause major flooding in southeast Texas. This was posted at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Hurricane Harvey made landfall as a Category 4 storm near Corpus Christi, Texas, and then stalled over southeastern Texas for days. And look, all one has to do is, well, you can check out my playlist, uh, which has 278 videos, not, you know, me speaking, uh, but others who are talking about how man controls weather, how man can make those storms stall for days and flood you out to the point where your life is thrown into a nightmare that is very hard to recover from. Yeah. Before I go on with that article, once again, No Bullshit has posted a really good video. AOC's Dumbest Moments of the Week. And it's number 23. So, on No Bullshit's channel, he's got 22 more videos with AOC saying, this is the spokesman spokeswoman for the Democrats? Are you kidding me, Democrats? Are you kidding me, Democrats? Are you really this pathetically stupid to not see through what's happening here? This woman knows nothing. She didn't write the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal comes out of mm, the United Nations and uh, another organization in Europe and it's been floated periodically throughout the years and hey we got this woman who looks pretty good and well she can talk but sometimes she sounds pretty stupid but oh it's kind of like the the uh, female version of Obama you know that brand Obama now we'll make an AOC brand, get her out there to talk about stuff that she has no clue what she's even talking about. Lots, Lots of interesting things, things to go over from you know who this week. So let's, let's jump right into it. You're probably wondering how and why AOC would be threatening a place like Miami this week. And I have a few reasons and theories behind this too. But first, let's check out the quote itself straight from the horse's mouth. Here's what Alex had to say about Miami in a clip that was released last week. When it goes to Would AOC debate any of these scientists? Of course not. She will not debate anyone that knows their stuff. But why aren't we hearing from all of these scientists, all of the climatologists, uh, uh, 
why are we not hearing from them on mainstream media? How could that be? How could it be? What's going on? Well, when you see the amount of scientists, and yes, uh, we had, what, 36,000 American scientists sign, sign onto a document that stated, we're disputing the global warming hysteria. But you're not going to hear about that. And you're not going to hear about, well, uh, just a couple of years ago, there were about a hundred international scientists that disputed this global warming you know, hysteria. But what we'll hear is the lies promoted. Now, you know, first, not, not first, but Obama, there's a consensus of scientists who agree, man, man with that CO2 is causing climate change and we better do something really fast even though well the global warming thing it stopped a really long time ago but it doesn't matter they're still using the word global warming um but a lot of it now you'll hear is climate change How is it that a small group, the IPCC, how is it that they carry the day still? Because we don't have enough people. We don't have enough people to go against what mainstream media is saying, what government officials are saying, what the IPCC is saying. There's plenty of scientists, but if the people still just want to listen to the lies spoken by mainstream media and people like AOC, that's why it carries the day. And it pisses me off to no end. To no end. You know, no bullshit made a really good point. Democrats, Democrats probably, probably don't, don't even believe in most of the bullshit, bullshit they're spouting here, which can be seen in the ways they act and how they don't practice what they preach about this at all. For example, we've already gone over before how AOC doesn't really adhere to any of the issues and policies she's proposing others should adapt. She wants to ban air travel and airplanes, but she still flies planes and rides in first class herself. And there's lots of other examples like this too, like how Alex uses disposable plastic bottles for drinking water instead of a reusable, cleanable one that's more green, but enough of that for for today. For today, for, for this point, point, let's talk about where this Democrat and her family buy their houses. You see, it's actually public knowledge that AOC's mom recently bought a house in Florida and she moved there as a way to escape New York's high property taxes. And never mind the hypocrisy of a Democrat's mother avoiding high taxes, which is something the crazy plans of her daughter would certainly include, higher taxes. But also, why would AOC's mom move to Florida if their family really thought that state was going to be underwater in a couple of years? Granted, Granted, the house she bought was somewhere in North Florida, but still, it doesn't seem like a place I would want to invest in if I really thought land erosion was a threat there. This reminds me of a similarly odd move from former President Barack Hussein Obama, which happened a few weeks ago. Around August 22nd, it was reported that the Obamas bought a $15 million mansion in Martha's Vineyard, and that seems pretty odd for two big and glaring reasons. First of all, if you didn't know, Martha's Vineyard is an island for rich people off the coast of Massachusetts, and it's certainly not a place you would want to invest in if you thought climate change was going to raise the water levels in a few years. Really, it doesn't seem like Obama, the former leader of the Democratic Party, thinks that climate change is going to affect the coast that bad then. And second, and this part is more worrying, and AOC is included on this next observation too, I have to ask you, how the hell are these Democrats getting so rich anyway? The Obamas are lawyers who haven't practiced in decades. Barack was president for eight years up until 2016, so how the hell did he get $15 million in just a few short years? 
clearly he was getting some money on the side while he was president. Or at the very least, he used his presidency to get him paid afterwards. And then there's AOC's mom buying a house in Florida, which didn't cost nearly as much, but still, what's up here? Where's all this money coming from, and how are Democrats who are politicians getting so rich? AOC was bartending before she got into Congress, and since she was elected, she's constantly complained about not getting enough money, too, even voting for and pushing for the idea that she should be getting a raise. Apparently, 174000 bucks a year isn't enough, enough for AOC, who only works part-time and gets off multiple months of the year when Congress is in recess as well. So how did AOC, her mom, and the Obamas get paid and get so rich? Surely there's some kind of corruption going on here. Bribes, pay-for-play, insider information trading, or something else, quite possibly. But there's also another thing, and another way these Democrats get rich. They take a page from Al Gore's book and start making documentaries, usually for Netflix these days. Netflix has hired and paid and supported Democrats like AOC and Obama for a good long while now. And lefties going into making documentaries to get rich and exploit their political authority as a way to make money is something that's been going on for decades, like I said. And we know it. And we know it. You know, how, oh God. Uh, I look at these people, they're repulsive. They are repulsive. Obama, AOC, all of these people who can sell their souls, spew lies for a living, well, they get to live a really nice life. While what we have actually going on is man controlling weather, bringing about an awful lot of destruction to the ordinary American. Yeah, Hurricane Harvey made landfall, Category 4, Corpus Christi. It sat there for days and days and days, according to NOAA. It had uh, ranked as the second costliest hurricane in U.S. history at $125 billion in damages, much of the property damage and fatalities occurred well after the storm was downgraded from a hurricane or a tropical storm. As I write this, another potentially nameless storm could threaten the same region with excessive rainfall and flooding. This is it. This is it. That's it. Wow. Let's take a look on College of DuPage. Superheating going on. This is Hurricane Humberto. Looks very different on radar. Very different. And look at all of these frequencies. Wow. Well, let's take a look at the radar on College of DuPage. Ah, I can see the rotating frequencies coming out of, is it Georgia or North Florida? And I've never seen them pulsing out from this uh, region of the country pulsing out into the Atlantic with another extremely low frequency cutting right through it. Wow, are they sending that, uh, yeah, Hurricane Humberto on its way to Bermuda? Who knows? Could be. You know, here. This could bring you massive flooding. The signatures of frequencies are right smack in here. As you can see, a pulsating, pulsating frequencies coming out of Galveston or, well, actually, no, that's, that's Houston, isn't it? But what, what are they saying? What's Forbes saying? Here's what we know. Disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico are associated with a broad area of low pressure. Some slow development of this system is possible before it moves inland along the northwestern Gulf Coast Tuesday night or Wednesday. Regardless of development, 
regardless of development. This system is expected is expected to produce locally heavy rainfall along portions of the central and upper Texas coastal areas later this week, regardless of the development. Okay, it doesn't matter. It, what this guy is saying, it doesn't matter. The system is just expected to produce heavy rainfall. Okay. Uh, that seems odd. NOAA Weather Prediction Center, one to three day precipitation forecast. One to three days. So what's going on here is that they know flooding is coming. They just don't know how it's coming. They don't know how it's coming, but it is coming. That's what this, the, this National Hurricane Center is saying. So if it comes, you'll know that it was a weapon used against you once again. One to three days of precipitation. They don't even know how long it's going to rain. Uh, up to a foot of rainfall in some parts of the region. Not good. So what's going on? Meteorologists like me use something called precipitable water to quantify how much moisture is in the atmosphere from the surface to the top of the atmosphere. Research in my group at the University of Georgia uh, led by Dr. Amanda Schroeder, now at the National Weather Service, has found that extreme precipitable water with values can be a good predictor of flooding. Another meteorological indicator of concern is convective available potential energy. This is a uh, metric that we use to determine how unstable the atmosphere may be in a storm environment. If the atmosphere is unstable, there is plenty of energy for air parcels to rise if lifted. It looks as though certain values of CAPE will be conductive for heavy rainfall. Wow. So, I guess they're using uh, more tools to do their forecasting. Uh, clearly, what you see is not something that would deliver a foot of rain, right? Please say yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay? Because it looks like, you know, a little itty bitty storm that's not really going to produce much. But if they get it going, look out. Look out, you guys in Texas. And the way this guy is writing his article, well, it sounds like it's going to happen. And it, it, they don't even have to have any, anything there for it to, for it to destroy. The word intense is particularly important, yes, according to the um, what's the WPC? My God, I can't even remember. Well, the WPC, yes, this environment could support three inches an hour rain totals should cells move, form, move or form, assure or merge or train which would be problematic outside of wetlands. With urban areas the most sensitive, there are a couple of alarming statements in that sentence. Three inches per hour is a lot of rainfall. The word train is a term used in meteorology to describe rain cells that essentially form or move over the same geographic location for significant periods of time training was a big problem with Hurricane Harvey. Why are meteorologists writing to educate you about new ways in which they are forecasting weather? Because man is controlling weather. 
training Jesus. Ironically, there is a Jekyll and Hyde story here. Much of the region has been dry lately, so initial rainfall should be welcome. However, the combination of intense rainfall rates Tuesday to Thursday, coupled with the urban impervious surfaces, surfaces of the region and stormwater engineering for the last century's rainstorms make it risky. This region is certainly prone to flooding, but it is dangerous to assume that your previous experience with the storm is an accurate predictor of how the next one will be. It is my hope that we are slowly inching people towards the understanding that the name or category of a storm is not as important as its potential impacts. Why? Because weather is being used as a weapon. That's why. So it doesn't matter. Call it anything you want. Make up names. Call it training. Because man is using weather as a weapon. And I'm sorry for my videos going on so long. I do feel it's really important to f somehow get it through to people that this climate change is a lie that this woman is a despicable mess of a human being, repulsive, another narcissistic personality that we're all now faced with. God, I don't know about you guys, but I am really sick of this. And if you hear the cat, behind me, having a hard time breathing. Yeah, a lot of cats around here are coming down with respiratory infections. What a surprise.